Hi everyone, welcome to Elite Code Weekly Contest 312. Um, it's been a while, so hopefully you still have it. Not increasing. Hmm, this seems interesting. Six, six, seven, one. I and B, it's added. I. for I and B. No, C, put I, plus still one. A single node counts. Okay. Six, seven, one. Take two and make four. Oh, okay. 
Okay. Int f. I take one. It's greater than equal. Ah, how do I? Two, three. No. Okay, what did I do wrong? The maximum value of the bitwise AND. Okay, so the maximum bitwise AND is just the maximum number, I think. Okay, I'll submit that. Okay, all four got accepted, which is somewhat calming. Um, I can't see the leaderboard yet because it's not 10 minutes, so I'll start going through the solutions. This problem is pretty straightforward. Basically, what I'm doing is I'm generating a list. Um, the list stores the height and the person's name, and then I'm just going to sort them and sort them in reversed order that way we're going to get the tallest heights first and then in this order i will just return the name for each of these pairs it's pretty simple um okay so in this question um the key is that the maximum bitwise possible bitwise and is simply just the largest number in the array um, the reason why it's the largest number is, well, if we consider like any sub array, let's consider just starting with like the first element, and then we're going to one by one add the element to the sub array. Every time we add an element, the bitwise and must it, it cannot increase because yeah, bitwise and if you're adding it with more numbers, that number will always stay the same or decrease. Which means that if we have a subarray which includes the maximum element, the maximum element will be 
like initially we'll have a bitwise and of that maximum element, but if we were to add any other element in, the bitwise and would shrink. Therefore, that means that the maximum possible bitwise and is actually just the largest number. And that also shows that um, of this subarray, it can only include that number. Because if it includes any smaller number, it must necessarily force the bitwise and to decrease. Um, and that's because for the bitwise and to stay the same, um, this the a number we're adding must have all the same set bits as this largest number, and therefore this number would be at least as large as this number. Basically, like the problem just boils down to find the longest subarray which if such that every element is equal to the maximum element in nums. So what I'm doing is I'm finding the maximum element, and then I just need to separate. I need to separate nums into segments of the same of the same number like this is one segment this is one segment this like these two threes are one segment and these two twos are one segment if i separate them into adjacent segments which is what i'm doing here if the segment's value is equal to the maximum number then i'll take my map the answer to be the maximum of my current answer and the length of the current segment there's other ways you can do it as well like you can just iterate through the array and keep a streak of how many times you've seen um, seen the largest number, but that's the way I chose to do it. Okay, in this question, I'm pre-computing two arrays. So in my solution, f i equals to the, like, it's, I think it's the largest subarray ending at position i, which is non-increasing, and after i is pretty similar. It's just the largest subarray starting at position i, which is non-decreasing. The way I compute it is um, I just iterate through the array. If our current number is no larger than the previous number, then our bef i will be equal to bef i take 1 plus 1, because the largest subarray ending at position i will just be the largest subarray ending at position i take 1, plus the element at position i. And if this condition isn't true, then the largest subarray must be 1. I do the same calculation for after, but since we're going, since now we're considering starting at position i, not ending, we must iterate in reverse order. And yeah. And then, like, it's pretty simple now. Now we just iterate through all the possible indices. Um, if, it's, if the BEF of the previous element is at least k, that means that, that the k elements be just before index i will be non-increasing by a definition. And same with after i plus 1. If the largest subarray starting at the position just after i has a length of at least k, then it's also good. And if both of these conditions are good, then we will add our index to the answer. Okay, now let's focus on this problem. Like, my code looks kind of long, but, like, all of this is just templates, so it actually wasn't that long. Okay, the key idea is, we are going to add, um, wh whenever I see questions that have to do with count the number of paths that, like, only go through numbers less than or equal to some value, I like to start with an empty graph, and I'm going to add nodes one by one in increasing order of value. So basically, my, my idea is if these elements have, like, these in, in this sample tree, the values are between 1 and 3, which means what I'm going to do is, first I'm going to add all of the nodes with, with value of 1 in the graph and count the number of paths I can form between those ones. Then I'm going to add the 2s to the graph, the node 2s to the graph, and I'm going to count the number of uh, edges between the nodes 2, because if there's an edge between... Um, like two, two nodes with value 2 in our current graph, since we haven't added in any nodes with higher values yet, if there is a path, that means that this path, all of the nodes will have values less than or equal to our current value, which is exactly what we want. So basically what I need to do is, for each value, I need to add all of those edges into the, I need to add all of those nodes with that value into the graph, add the edges if they are present, and then I need to count the number of paths that go between two nodes with this current value. And then if I do this for all of the values, um, that will give me the correct answer. 
I, I hope that made sense. Anyway, so basically, I'm. This is pretty straightforward implementation. Like here, like dx is is the list of um, nodes with value x. Th this is just like an. This is just an adjacency list. This is just template unit and find. So we we're going to ignore all of that. Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to iterate through um, the values of the nodes in increasing order. For each value, I'm going to get a list v, and v is the set of nodes with this current value. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to add all of these nodes to our graph and then count the number of paths um, between those nodes that, that I can traverse with my current graph. So the first part, um, if we add our nodes to the graph, it's pretty simple. We just mark the node as added. Then for each of the nodes that we're adding, for each of its neighbors, if that's already added, then we need to add the current edge. We need to add the edge. And the way I've added the edge is with a union find or disjoint set data structure. Okay, now there's the final part, which is um, we need to count if two nodes, we need to count how many paths between two nodes in V, um, how many paths exist, because some of these nodes might be disconnected from each other and we can't reach them. And now all we need to do is, since we have a union find data structure, we actually just need to find the number of pairs of nodes which, ex which are in the same component, since being in the same component is equivalent to having a path between them. So all I'm doing is C is like, here C, CX is, is the number of nodes in V uh, with a which are in the same which are in the component X which are in like the X component X component just for each for each node I'll um, find its component with my union find data structure and then for each component I need to add I times I plus one divided by two because this is the number of ways to choose two, because this is the number, like, in general, if you have, like, x things, there's x times x plus 1 divided by two ways to choose two things um, out of those x things, if you are allowed to choose the same, if you are allowed to choose the same thing twice. Like, we, are, we have to count distinct paths um, which start and end at the same node. And that's why, like, sometimes you might see i times i take 1 over 2, but this time it needs to be plus because we need to account for um, paths that start and end on the same node. So, yeah, so for each component, i will just be the size of the component, um, and then I just need to add i times i plus 1 and 2, and then I'm done. All right, let's check our rankings. Easy. Okay, let's go first place. First place by two minutes as well, which is quite nice. And that is another Apple HomePod Mini. So I think that's my fourth. Uh, in terms of rating, I'm rank two. And since I have this, um, I'll be like 3,640 maybe, something like that, which means I might only be like one contest away from first place potentially. Anyway, thanks for watching. Um, Hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you guys next time.